Let's haul some books. Hey guys, welcome back to Portable Magic. I have you guys facing this way so that I don't spoil my book haul, but I do have quite a few books to show off. Now, I have some fairy loot books that have not made it into a book haul video yet, and I have one on the way. <laughs> However, they're not here yet, but I wanted to go ahead and do this book haul before I forgot to show off what I already have. And I do have some book of the month books. I also am waiting on my copy of Empire of the Damned by Jay Kristoff. It's on its way, just isn't here yet. I'm also waiting on a copy of Daughter of No Worlds by Chris Broadbent. It's just not here yet. <laughs> so that is going to be a part of this haul, even though I only have images to show you right now because they are en route. <laughs> like I said, there are a couple of fairy loot books that I haven't been able to show off. First of those being a Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle L. Jensen. This is the book I'm actually currently reading and I'm really enjoying it. So here is all the loveliness. Oh, there you can see that and the foiled cover. I'm really enjoying this. I really love the way that they printed the book. It is so awesome. Obviously, I'm not reading this copy because I don't want to mess this one up, but I highly recommend Danielle L. Jensen. Love her writing. She is great at combining fantasy and romance and blending the two very well. Have a really great fantasy story to go along with a great romance. Just really enjoy all of that. <laughs> and then I never got a chance to show off The City of Stardust by Georgia Summers. This is again another fairy loot book. I love that iridescent title there. That's so cool. <laughs> and I had actually put this on my TBR before getting my copy from fairy loot. And then this has a reversible dust jacket that is very similar to the actual cover, just in a different color. And so we have the sprayed edges here. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. I am hoping to actually get to this in the near future. I'm waiting on Libby because, again, I don't really like reading these. I'm afraid I'm going to mess them up. And if you guys have been watching my vlogs, you will know Kagan the Damned was awesome. And so I have bought Son of the Poison Rose, which is the second book in the Kagan of the Damned novels. And I'm just excited to continue with this. They are very dark, check trigger warnings, but we have Kagan who is kind of this heroic figure that something bad happens and his heroism is put to the test and he decides to run away. <laughs> hey, that's the best synopsis I can give of Kagan, but I've really enjoyed it. And again, like I said, I have recently read this. It'll be in a recent vlog. If it's not posted now, it will be posted in the next few days, but loved Kagan. Okay, now I have four books from Book of the Month and then the rest will be from the Buy Sell Trade. The Women by Kristen Hanna. Honestly, I have no clue what this is about, but Kristen Hanna wrote it, so I'm gonna read it. I'm a big fan of Kristen Hanna's. I have read most of what she's put out and this is the next to come along and so I'm excited to get to this. I do have a project I want to do at the end of this month, so this has not been added to that, but I will hopefully get to it next month. Next is Heartless Hunter by Kristen Cicerelli, <laughs> her deadliest enemy or her greatest love. That is what got me. This is an enemies to lovers romanticy, and I'm very excited for that. I didn't really need to know any more because I keep testing the waters with fantasy romance, seeing where my tastes lie, seeing if I can come across new authors that I can actually find a backlist of books from them or be on the lookout for new books from them. But this is the start of a series and I'm very excited for it. As you guys know, uh, one of my favorite books of last year was Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. So when it won the Book of the Year award from Book of the Month, I had to get Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez and give it a shot because Part of Your World was amazing and I'm hoping that this book will be just the same. Okay, and with Book of the Month, you have to pick one of their monthly selections. And I had a problem this month because I owned the two books that I wanted from Book of the Month already. <laughs> and so I chose Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera. <laughs> and I don't know much about it other than it's a mystery thriller. This does say, what if you thought you murdered your best friend? And if everyone else thought so too, and what if the truth doesn't matter? 
<laughs> so I'm kind of excited. I have a feeling this is going to have some mixed media elements in it because um, the like headphone cord and everything like that. And I just kind of peeked through and yeah, it does. I saw some interview snippets from it. So this might actually be a good book to listen to via audio. If I can get the audio from Libby, that would be really great. Now we are going to get into the buy, sell, trade books. I lied. I totally lied. I went to books a million. Why did I say buy, sell, trade? Cause that's where I usually go. I went to books a million and shopped their clearance section and they had some really good deals. So you'll be able to see the price cause they put the sticker right on the front, but I got the spirit engineer by AJ West for seven ninety seven. <laughs> now I've heard quite a few people talk about this book. It says a fiendishly clever tale of ambition, deception, and power. Belfast, 1914, two years after the sinking of the, of the Titanic, High society has become obsessed with spiritualism, attending seances in the hope they might reach their departed loved ones. William Jackson Crawford is a man of science and skeptic. But one night, with everyone sitting around the circle, voices come to him, seemingly from the beyond, placing doubts in his heart and a seed of obsession in his mind. Could the spirits truly be communicating with him, or is this one of Kathleen's parlor tricks gone too far? <laughs> it sounds pretty dang good and pretty up my alley, so I'm very excited to get to this one. And you guys might know this, you might not, but it'll be coming up very soon. I finally found a copy of one of my favorite books of all time, Sister Song by Lucy Holland. Now, this is a very gripping tale about three sisters and their journey through life and how being part of a sisterhood can really help you get through life. It's so beautiful and so lyrical. And the things that happen in here, it's, uh, it's just so absolutely captivating and I love it. I love it. If you are looking for mythology retelling that is just as good as Circe, this is it. Now I don't remember where I heard about this next book. I have a feeling it was my friend Tessa because whenever I posted my haul she was like, oh yay Seven Devils! And I was like, oh are you who I heard about this book from? Because all I could remember is that I heard that this book was really good. So Seven Devils by Laura Lamb and Elizabeth May. I, I cover by? I mean, it sounds really dang good. But it says, when Eris faked her death, she thought she had left her old life as heir to the galaxy's most ruthless empire behind. But her recruitment by the Novanti Resistance, an organization opposed to Philosian <laughs> Empire's voracious expansion, throws her right back into the fray. Eris has been assigned a new mission to infiltrate a spaceship bearing deadly cargo and return the intelligence she gathers to the Resistance. But her partner for the mission, mechanic and hotshot pilot, Cleolia <laughs> bears an old grudge against, old grudge against Eris, making an already difficult mission even more complicated. <laughs> so it sounds really dang good. <laughs> now, another book that I've seen popping up every now and then on booktube is The God of Endings by Jacqueline Holland. And I don't know much about this other than everybody has said the writing is amazing. Um, by turns suspenseful and enchanting, this astonishing first novel weaves a story of love, family, history, and myth as seen through the eyes of one immortal woman. Let Song is a lonely artist who has an elite fine art school for children in upstate New York. Her youthful beauty masks the dark truth of her life. She has an endured centuries of turmoil, turmoil and heartache in the wake of her grandfather's long ago decision to make her immortal like himself. Now in 1984, Colette finds her life upended by the arrival of a gifted child from a troubled home, the return of a stalking presence from her past, and her own mysteriously growing hunger for blood. So yes, that was it. This has kind of like a vampiric origin story feel to it. And I am obsessed <laughs> already and I haven't even started it. And taking another dark route, I have In the Garden of Spite by Camilla Bruce. I've heard this is dark and that's really all I need to know. <laughs> but it says an audacious novel of feminine rage and one of the most prolific female serial killers in American history and the men who drove her to it. <laughs> so I'm kind of excited about this one. I'm hoping to get this one on the TBR very, very soon. I have read The Nature of Witches, I believe, by Rachel Griffin, and this is Wild is the Witch. I really enjoyed that first book a lot. And <laughs> I think that it was my first taste of witches actually affecting the env environment around them and having a stake in how the environment reacts. And I thought that was so cool. And so I just kind of want to read more from Rachel Griffin. And so I bought 
her next to book. These are standalones in the same world, I believe. And this says Enemies to Lovers Contemporary Fantasy Standalone. So I'm always down for Enemies to Lovers. <laughs> and then I did the thing I said I wasn't gonna do anymore. <sighs> I bought the second book of a series that I haven't started <laughs> because it was $7.97. <laughs> I couldn't pass it up. <sighs> so this is the second book to The Starless Crown by James Rollins. And I've heard this series is very, very good. So that means that I need to read The Starless Crown and find out because I bought the second book. <laughs> Editing Trinity coming in to say I forgot something. To something. Oh, let me just flick my cord at you guys. To something. So I had a house fire a few years ago. And in the house fire, I lost my beautiful copy of Rebecca and the copy that I had had forever of Brave New World. And it was the two that I had not yet replaced. However, for my birthday, my friend Izzy, she has been replacing those books. I got Rebecca last year and this year she got me this cool 3D cover of Brave New World. And when I say cool 3D cover, it has glasses <laughs> and that is so freaking cool. Um, I really, really love this cover. It's really cool and I'm happy to have a copy, but the coolest thing ever, <laughs> the other thing she got me was a graphic novel of Brave New World. I am so excited for this. This will be how I consume Brave New World the next time I do. <laughs> and I, I'm just, I'm looking forward to this so much. I'm looking forward to see what they do with the world. I'm looking forward to see the way they've drawn the characters and everything like that. It's just so cool. It's so cool. <laughs> All right, <laughs> back to the video. All right, that is it for me today. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget I have a Patreon and can always like and subscribe to this channel for more content. Bye.